All right, so this is our last video that you will need to listen to, watch, whatever for the rest of the year. Um, so this is going to be the final exam review video. I have some questions that I've already pre-selected. I'm just gonna go through them. I'm not gonna go through any of the proof questions because if you need to go through those, just watch the video that was made. I have three videos going over proofs uh, specifically. So you can watch them if you need to. All right, so um, at any point, Hopefully this isn't multiple videos, but if something messes up, it'll be multiple videos. Um, but at all points, you'll see what works I'm working on and what number. So I'm not going through every question, but I will go through majority of the different types of questions that we have. All right, so here it's just graphing this equation. Uh, so remember, when we graph, there's two things that we need in order to graph our slope. Well, there are different methods that you could use, but the method that we used was using our slope and our y-intercept. And the first thing that we need to graph is our y-intercept. And then the second thing that we graph is our slope. And our graph will give us our directions to our next point. All right, so what we do first is figure out, well, what is our y-intercept and what is our slope? Remember, the y-intercept is the constant that is being added or subtracted. So in this case, our y-intercept is 1. And our slope is a number that's being multiplied or, um, you yeah, know, is being multiplied to our, our x variable. Because remember, it's y is equal to mx plus b, and our m is our slope. So in this case, it is negative 4 over 3. So the first thing we do is we plot the point. We plot our y-intercept because that is very easy. It's where we cross our y-axis. And then this is telling us our, where our next point is. Remember, it's change in y over change in x or rise over run, however you may have learned this before. Um, so then from here, it's saying negative 4, 3. So that means my y is changing by negative 4. So I'll go down 1, 2, 3, 4. And I know it's going to be somewhere along this line. Let me just put this black dot here. I know it's going to be somewhere along this line. Where is it at? I don't know. Not until I look at what my denominator is. So it's a positive 3. So that means it's changing. Uh, I need to go 3 and the, the, a positive on the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3. Right now, after I have these two points, I will then use a straight edge. Um, it's hard to use a straight edge on this writing tab, so I'll try to make this as straight as possible. Um, and there is our graph. There is our line. All right. Write the, the slope-intercept form of the equation line passing through the given points. So first, we need to know well, what is our slope-intercept form. That is y is equal to mx plus b. In order for us to write this, as uh, our equation, we need to solve for two different letters. We need to solve for our slope and our y-intercept. Well, we have a formula that we will know for our slope, and our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We then will denote, uh, we have our points 0, 5, and negative 3, negative 2. We'll just denote this x1, y1, x2, y2. We'll plug it in and solve, so it becomes uh, negative 2 minus 5 over top of negative 3 minus 0. This gives me negative 7 over negative 3, which is then positive 7 over positive 3. So right away, now I know that my equation, y is equal to 7 over 3x plus b. Well, the last one that I need to solve for is this y-intercept, or b. And what we do now is we see that we have three unknowns, x, well, y, x, and b. Well, if we want to solve for one of these, we need to know what two of the other variables are equal to, and we do that by picking one of these points. Now, I know what our y-intercept is, is looking at this point, and maybe some of you will be able to identify that by looking at the point zero 05, um, and maybe some of you can't. So I'm just gonna show you what you can do no matter what, is you pick a point, and we plug it in for x or y. Remember, this is x comma y. So if the, if the point falls on a the line, then we know it's gonna satisfy this equation, so we can substitute it in. 5 is equal to 7 over 3 times 0, because that's what x will be, plus b. Well, 7 over 3 times 0 is 0, so we don't need to write it, so b is then equal to 5. So then our final answer, y is equal to 7 over 3x plus 5. All right, then the next one that we're going to do is it passes through the points negative 2, 1, and it is parallel to y is equal to negative 3x minus 1. So remember, well, what does it mean for lines to be parallel? That means that they have the same slope. So when we're trying to find the equation of this new line, y is equal to mx plus b, well, since I know it's parallel to this equation given, I know that they have the same slope. So if this slope is equal to negative 3, 
then I know that the slope from my new equation also has to be equal to negative 3. Now, some of the mistakes I'm seeing are some people are saying, okay, well, B must be negative 1 because this is minus 1. No, this is a brand new equation, right? We're solving for a completely separate equation than this one here. All we're doing is saying, well, if it's parallel, then we know that we have the same slopes. That's what we're allowed to do. So you don't use this B with anything. So now we have the equation y is equal to negative 3x plus b. We still need to solve for b. So if we just plugged in negative 1 for b, there's nothing for us to solve. That means I'm just giving you the answer right off the bat. So we will look and say, well, how do we solve for a b? Well, remember, this is x and this is y. So we substitute it just like we did with the other problem. So 1 is equal to negative 3 times negative 2 plus b. 1 is equal to 6 plus b. Subtract 6. So subtract to 6, negative 5 is equal to b. So our final answer, y is equal to negative 3x minus 5. All right, see here how you notice our b is not the same, or y intercept is not the same as what we started with, and that is fine because it's a completely different equation. If we were to say y is equal to negative 3x minus 1, uh, 1, it wouldn't be parallel to this equation because it would actually touch every single point. And then it wouldn't pass through the points, negative 2, 1. So that's why it's important that we do not use that B. All right, and then if you need help with 11, 12, or 13, then you can just follow that video again, take notes, not just writing down what I'm doing, but taking notes of why I'm doing it, and apply it to that problem. All right, I'm going to go through 17 because 17 is harder than 14, 15, and 16. But once we get started on 17, uh, if you can do 17, then you can use that to follow the steps of fifth, uh, 14 through 16. All right, so it says find the equation of a line. So first off, I know I need to find y is equal to mx plus b. That's our, our um, final answer that we're trying to get to. And it's perpendicular to the equation. So I'm going to write, okay, it's perpendicular to y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 5. And it passes to the midpoint of 5, negative 8, and 1, 4. Okay, so now it's not just flat out giving me the point like it did here. I need to solve for that point. But before I get to that, let's just go ahead and do what we can for right now. Well, what does perpendicular lines mean? Well, that means that they intersect at 90 degrees, um, but it also tells us that our slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So if I know that this slope is equal to negative 1 half, the perpendicular slope must be equal to a positive 2 because we will flip the negative 1 over 2. I mean, you say you love me, but now you flip them like reciprocals. And then we take the opposite of it. So if it was negative, we make it positive. So now I know I have the answer so far of y is equal to 2x plus b. All right now, before I can solve for my b, I need to find the point that it's passing through. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this in half real quick so I can do the second part of it. All right, I can't use 5 or negative 8 or 1 and 4 as my x and y because it doesn't actually pass through that. It says it passes through the midpoint. Well, our midpoint, we have the formula of x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2, all right? So we have these points of 5, negative 8, and 1, 4. Oops, 1, 4. Let me just erase this and rewrite it. 1, 4, all right? So first thing we're going to do is we need to label these. x1, y1, x2, y2. We plug it in. Our midpoint is equal to, in this case, it'll be 5 plus 1 divided by 2, and negative 8 plus 4 divided by 2. Well, 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Divided by 2 is negative 2. All right, so there is our midpoint. So that means this is the point that our line passes through because it passes through the midpoint. So in order for us to solve for this, we just need to go ahead and plug in an x and a y. So that means y, or negative 2, because we know it passes through that, is equal to 2 times uh, x, because 2 is our slope, and our x is going to be 3 in this case, because that's the line that passes through, a point that passes through. So negative 2 is equal to 6 plus b, subtract to 6, negative 8 is equal to b. So then our final answer, y is equal to 2x minus 8. And remember, we knew that the 2 is our slope because it's a perpendicular to the line that's given here. All right, so 14, 15, and 16... It's actually easier than this because I flat out give you the point that it passes through. You don't have to solve for it uh, like we did here. Right? So if you can do 17, there's no reason why you can't do any of those other problems. All right, so let's go ahead and find number 20. Now, I just did a question like number 20, so I'm going to go through it really fast. So remember, um, 
I did the question like number 20 because we just found the midpoint here. Um, but remember, our midpoint formula is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2 and y1 plus y2 divided by 2. I will be giving you all the formulas on your test, but you're also going to get fake formulas from me. So although it's going to be on there and for you to see, you'll still have to know which one to apply and which one to use. Um, and so if you have been doing any of this work, it shouldn't be hard because the formula is there and you'll know which one it applies to. But if you haven't done anything, when you go to do this, you might pick the wrong one. If you pick the wrong formula, you can't get any points. You're going to lose all points for that question. Right? So here we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. The common mistake is that people will, will either write x1, x2 real fast or they do x1, y2. Remember, you, the subscript 1 means it's the first order pair, the second order pair. So it means that they have to be grouped together. Right now, we just go ahead and just plug it into our formula. Our midpoint is equal to uh, 6 plus negative 3 over 2 and negative 3 plus 5 over 2. Well, 6 plus negative 3 is going to give me positive 3, and 3 over 2 remains a fraction, 3 over 2. So you can just leave it. Now, our midpoint is equal to 3 over 2. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. If you want to write this 1.5 or 1 and 1 half, I won't take off any points. Uh, but you can also just leave it as an improper fraction if you like. All right, now for number 23, it's a little bit different because if you notice here, it says find the midpoint. So that means we're given the two endpoints here. Now it says we're given an endpoint and a midpoint. So when we go to plug in this formula where we have x1 uh, plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2, uh, we don't have both of the endpoints. So that means we can't plug in for this x2 because we don't know what it is. So this is our midpoint. So that will get substituted where our midpoint is for this formula. So that means it's negative 7, negative 9 is equal to, because we know what the midpoint is. This will be x1 and y1. So then it'll be equal to x1, 10. We don't know x2. We're trying to solve for the other endpoint divided by 2. And negative 8 plus y2 over 2. All right, we know what the midpoint is. This generates our midpoint. So that means this has to equal our x value of our midpoint. And then this has to be equal to the y value of our midpoint. So when we go to solve this, we would just simply do negative 7 is equal to 10 plus x2 over 2. And negative 9 is equal to negative 8 plus y2 over 2. All right, because this is our midpoint formula and it generates our midpoint. And now I'm just going to go ahead and solve them. When we're dividing by 2, we'll get rid of division by 2. We multiply. So negative 14 is equal to 10 plus x2. We subtract 10. x2 is then equal to negative 24. Here we multiply by 2 because it's being divided by 2. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So negative 18 is equal to negative 8 plus y2. We add the 8. Negative 10 is equal to y2. So we have the point negative 24, negative 10. Please make sure you're writing this answer in order pair or you won't get full credit because it's saying find the endpoint. So you got to give it to me as a, it's an order pair. All right. Um, if these endpoints are labeled with a letter, like find the endpoint A, then you'll just write the letter A next to it like this. All right. Um, and then once you get your answer, check your work, plug it in. Does negative 24 plus 10 divided by 2 equal negative 7? Yes. Does negative 8 plus negative 10 divided by 2 equals uh, negative 9? Yes. All right, it's an easy way for you to check your work. All right, now number 27. We have x minus 2y times 2x minus 7y. So in this case, we're expanding, and we learn FOIL. So if you wanted to write out F-O-I-L, you could, or you can go ahead and use your arrows. x times 2x is equal to 2x squared x times negative 7 is equal to negative 7xy. Negative 2y times 2x is equal to negative 4xy. And negative 2y times negative 7 is equal to positive 14y squared. We add or combine our like terms. That's these two here. So then we get 2x squared minus 11xy plus 14y squared. And that would be your final answer. All right, you can either write out FOIL and do your first, outer, and our last, or you can draw the arrows. It's completely up to you. We also went over a Punnett square and how we can use that, so it's up to you. All right, so this one, it says factor the common factor out of each expression. Your, your question on your tests or your final 
it won't say exactly what you need to do. It just will say factor completely. Uh, so you'll need to know that you have to look at this and say, okay, well, all of these are divisible by 10. So that means I'm going to take out a GCF of 10 at least. I have X in every single one, so I take out my lowest power of X squared. But you also have to look. This first term, our leading coefficient, is negative. We want that to be positive, so that means I'm going to take out a negative 10X squared. So all of these will be divided by negative 10X squared, and this will give me a positive 8X squared, then minus 5X, and minus 10. And that will be factoring out our GCF. All right, we're almost done with this worksheet. Uh, before we move on to the next one, um, this one is factored completely. Remember, when we have two terms, we're seeing is it a difference of squares? So first thing we need to ask is, is there a subtraction? Yes. Can we take the square root? This gives me 4n. This gives me 5n. And then what is the difference of two squares? It's the two terms, so plus 5n and 4n minus 5n. Remember, the one that follows the minus sign uh, whatever square root that is, it needs to be plus or minus for it. All right, then the last one for factoring, I am going to send out another factoring worksheet um, that I will ask you all to do uh, just to get more practice because I've realized now that it's missing some problems uh, that we've done in factoring, like just regular basic X method and um, factoring when there's a coefficient other than one and it's not a perfect trinomial square. Um, so you'll get a couple more problems to work on with that. All right now, First thing, GCF, all right? All of these are divisible by five. So I will take out the five, I'm left with four X squared minus 25 X Y. Not 25, sorry. Minus 20 plus, and this will then be 25 Y squared. All right, and then from here, when we have three terms, remember we look and see, is it a perfect trinomial square? It's the easiest one for us to check off and say yes or no. And if, it's, if it is, then it makes it nice and easy for us to factor. First thing is, are the first and third terms positive? Yes, they are. Can I take the square root? Yes, I can. 2x and 5y. After you do that, you then will multiply them together. That gives me 10xy. And remember, we double it and 20xy. Then we check and see, is the, does this match the middle term? Disregard the sign. Yes, it does. So if it does, that means check this is a perfect trinomial square. Well, we take right down our GCF, which is 5. We take our two square roots, which is 2x and 5y. It's being raised to the second power, and whatever sign we have here is a sign that we have here. All right, so that would then be our uh, final answer for number 52. All right, on your final exam, any questions that say uh, system of equations, you could solve by any method you want. So I'm going to go through one of each just so this way uh, you know exactly how it is that you need to solve uh, whichever method you're going to do. All right, so for this one, number 54, we have the two equations, y is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Well, the first one we're going to graph is this equation here. I'm going to do this one in blue. When y is equal to 1, that is going to be a horizontal line where y is equal to one. So the first thing we can do is we can plot it as a y-intercept, and then we know, well, the y has to be one every single time, so we can't move up or down. Right? Then the next one I'll graph, I'll graph in black. We need our slope, and we need our y-intercept. First one we graph is our y-intercept, that is our constant, that is at or subtracted, so it's at negative one. Right? Then the, the slope, like I said before, gives us our directions. It'll go to be uh, negative two over one, that's our change in y over change in x, it is our rise over our run. So we start at negative one, which we did, and it's negative two. So that means I'm gonna go down one, two, and over one because it's a positive one. Down one, two, and over one. I can also go in the other direction. I can go up two and left one because I know a two over negative one is still negative two, all right? Uh, like I said before, I think when you're solving system equations through graphing, it is better to plot as many points as you can because in this way you know exactly where your graph is going to be uh, intersecting at. And that is going to be at this point here. And that will be at negative one, positive one. So our answer for this one is negative one, positive one. All right, I am going to skip uh, elimination. I was going to do one of these, but I am going to skip it because I'm going to do it uh, in one of these word problems. All right, so here it's by substitution. Well, they're telling me y is equal to 5x minus 7. So when I have the other equation of 4x minus 4y is equal to negative 4, I can substitute what I know for y to be equal to. So 4x minus 4 times 
5x minus 7 is equal to negative 4. Now I have one variable and I can go ahead and solve for x. I can distribute this in. So 4x minus 20x plus 28 is equal to negative 4. I will combine my like terms and get negative 16x. And then I will go ahead and subtract over the 28. So negative 16x is equal to negative 32. I'll divide each side by negative 16. And x is equal to a positive 2. To solve for y, all I need to do now is substitute in for x. So that will be y is equal to 5 times 2 minus 7. Uh, this is 10 minus 7, so y is then equal to 3. And remember, for these, you must write your answer as an ordered pair of 2, comma, 3. All right, now this is the last question I'm going to go through in this worksheet, and this will be question number 68. And right, first thing we have to do is be able to rewrite this as two equations, directions, if this is on your final exam, just like it was on your test. We'll say uh, write a system of equations, define your variables, and then solve. So the school that Wilbur goes to is selling tickets to a choral performance. On the first day of the ticket sales, the school sold seven senior citizen tickets and six student tickets for a total of $69. The school took in 129 on the second day by selling 11 senior citizen tickets and 12 student tickets. Find the price of a senior citizen ticket and the price of a student. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my variables right now. I'm gonna write C as one variable and I'll say price of senior citizen uh, ticket and then I will also have uh, let's see let's just do T is going to be equal to the price of student ticket now you could use any uh, variable you wanted I just didn't want to use S since both of them involve uh, an S with senior and student all right so I went with C for citizen and T because it's the second letter of the student you can do whatever you want uh, make sure you're defining these properly on a test that you took. A lot of people lost points because you would just say C is equal to senior citizen. What does that mean? That doesn't really tell me anything. Right? It needs to be defined properly. It's the price of the senior citizen ticket. And T will be the price of a student ticket. Right, I'm going to erase this real quick. Uh, and I'm just going to make it a capital T. And this will be a capital C that I use as well. Right, so seven senior citizen and six student tickets for a total of $69. So it will be 7C plus 6t is equal to 69, right? Then the other equation will be 11 senior citizen and 12 students. So 11c plus 12t, and it said that that was $129, right? Now, I just need to solve. I'm going to do this by elimination. Uh, the reason why is there's no variable that has a coefficient of positive 1, uh, which is what we would want to use for uh, substitution. We'd want to solve for that variable. And then when we have numbers like this where 12 doesn't go into 129, it's going to be hard for us to go ahead and graph this. Um, and plus, uh, knowing which one to graph in your x and y axis, it, it could just be some issues with graphing. So we're just going to solve by elimination. So I'm going to eliminate my t's, and I'm going to do that by multiplying everything by negative 2. So negative 14c minus 12t is equal to negative 138. Then we will go ahead and add down. This will give me negative 3c. These eliminate is equal to negative 9. And c is equal to 3 after I divide by 3. Then to solve for my t, I'll just plug it back in. I'll plug it back into this equation. So 7 times 3 uh, plus 6t is equal to 69. 21 plus 6t is equal to 69. Subtract over our 21. 6t is equal to... 48, divide each by 6, and t is then equal to 8. Remember, do not write these as order pairs, um, and you could um, could write it in sentence form if you, if you wanted to, but since you're defining your variables properly, you don't have to do that. You can just leave it as c is equal to 3. What does c mean? I can go back and check what your defining of your variables were. All right, uh, I was just going to do this as one continuous um, video, uh, but I think I'm going to uh, do this in, in, in increments. Uh, so this way you can skip through the different videos. All right, uh, and that would be it for this video then.